Uh, my name is Liz Rowlinson. I'm a property journalist and I'm here today with John Moynes, uh, Director of PSS International Removals, to talk about <sighs> how to move abroad um, in, in Europe and indeed further afield uh, post-Brexit. So good afternoon, John. Good afternoon, Liz. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's uh, challenging times, but uh, it's now, what, been four months, so we're pretty confident on the process now. Yeah, you guys have been around a long time, haven't you? Uh, just tell us a bit about the company, what it does, what sort of, how many countries you cover, etc. Yeah. Um, yes, certainly. I mean, PSS now has been trading going on, uh, well, 39 years now. Um, what makes us slightly unique is that we only specialise in international removals, right? So whether it be Europe um, or the US or any, pretty much anywhere around the globe, we've got a strong net over that time period we've built a very strong network of partners that would assist in terms of customs clearance, um, assist with deliveries, that's by sea freight. Uh, also, we've got a really strong network of European partners that we've built up, uh, being members of what we call the Euromovers Group, um, has really assisted us, certainly post-Brexit, has been uh, obviously quite challenging for everybody, including our clients. So, um, you know, the government wasn't really that helpful uh, with the change, the changes that happened. But, um, you know, we be pretty confident now. We've, we've, we've found that it's been pretty smooth, but um, we've got depots up in, um, we've got one down in Croydon, we've got one in Essex, we've got one in Manchester, Dartford. So um, we pretty much covered the whole of the um, UK. It's all our staff. Um, we've got staff members who've been with us for many years, some of them since post-school graduates and uh, been with us for oh, 20 plus years. And certainly the packing team, really nice bunch of guys, all been trained in accordance of what full international export packing's about and the requirements very importantly. So um, yeah, been doing it for a while now. And what countries do you, what are your, what's your bread and butter countries? I mean, the bread and butter, I would certainly say is definitely uh, the whole of Europe. I mean, the, like I said, there's been, uh, you would think that post-Brexit would have slowed down, but I am pleasantly surprised the amount of families that maybe were thinking about it were going off there. So there's not a single oh, 27 uh, countries out there in Europe that we do not cover, um, and that's the whole of Europe. But then certainly further afield, like I said, the Australasian market is really big. Um, the US market is always has been uh, one of our top destinations, certainly places like Florida, um, second homes, people looking at second homes, sending memorabilia out there or even uh, moving out there. So um, there are a couple of maybe uh, countries that we may find customs regulations a little bit tricky, um, but we do work with our partners as long as the companies we work with are what they call FIDI regulated, having to follow international guidelines. Um, but yeah, I would say there's pretty much not an area that we don't uh, actually ship to, but certainly Europe and the US is certainly a massive part of our our whole infrastructure, definitely. Yeah, you're right. The appetite for it's quite astonishing that there's I'm talking to people who are keen to move all the time at the moment um, as things open up. And it's either it's it's a new job, it's a new lifestyle. I mean, what what do most of your movers? Why are they moving? Well, I mean, the majority of it's lifestyle. I mean, there's no way about it. Um, certainly, I would say with the pandemic has also made people really think about their lives and you know obviously sitting at home over this period of time a lot of people have family abroad you know mom and dad may have retired on the you know the south coast of spain or you know in greece mm -hmm. portugal um and really miss the family and who those who have actually thought about it you know have really made that decision now you know especially with young children um i'm quite surprised it's not just the you know the mature family you know looking at a second home anymore it's actually people looking at where's Europe has always been a big part of a second home, go over on the summer, but it's actually now, it's actually swung itself the other way around now. It's where families are actually physically moving out there, you know, taking lock, stock and barrel and the whole lot, um, you know, and it also helps with, you know, stamp duty currently, who knows how that's going to change in the next week or two. You know, the housing market, I think, I believe, it hasn't been this buoyant since uh, the last 40 years. So, um, there's certainly that trend now of those people who it was a dream. Now it's becoming a reality where obviously circumstances, but generally it's always been the biggest priority has been lifestyle, but also um, employers um, in, around Europe are desperately seeking, you know, skilled migrants. Um, so we're seeing a lot of employer driven uh, 
uh, migration going out, which again, and I'm specifically sorry, talking about Europe in general, um, you know, we've got places like Norway and Switzerland uh, becoming a really big area for, um, you know, looking for skilled migrants to move out there, you know, so um, it's great. I mean, great for business, but a little bit worrying who's going to be left behind, you know, not many people are going to be left behind because I heard London is something like the population being down by 9%. Um, so it, there's been a, certainly a mass exodus and I can see the attraction, you know, the lifestyle, you know, the property, what you get value for money. So I can certainly see the attraction why people want to move. Yeah. Yeah. And then the massive lifestyle trend of working from home that uh, we uh, everyone is keen to a lot of people are keen to remote work abroad. Um, they realize yeah. they can do that from their home, whether it's a holiday home or, or full time. So lots of things playing into this trend. So so, John, tell me if people want to move, it's really key that they start talking to you really early on isn't it? Can you tell us about sort of when, what, what are the stages of planning the sort of physical move? Okay, well, I mean, now again, and again, because I'm bringing up post-Brexit, because obviously there's, I'm, I'm inundated with phone calls and the staff are inundated with phone calls, um, because gone are the days where you could just throw blankets over your pieces of furniture, put it in the back of the vehicle and drive it across, right? There's so many new regulations involved. Um, and um, we would strongly recommend start speaking to us at least six months before you go. You know, I'm still constantly surprised how we get phone calls where an individual will give us a call and say, I've got a three bedroom property. I want to send it over to Portugal, but I need to move next week. Right. So everybody's in a bit of a panic because with the new regulations, and I will certainly go through that shortly, but with the new regulations, you want to be able to make the process not only for ourselves, operationally to know what the access looks like, what type of furniture we're walking into and the material required to move that uh, consignment over. But it's also about making that process a lot easier for our clients. So if you've got time to plan, I mean, typically example, um, there's quite a lot of documentation required now when moving to Europe. Now, if you can do that process in a, over a lengthy period of time, um, we've had it where we picked up things at the last minute and unfortunately the required documents and the computer and everything that it's on is already being packed up. So we want to be able to have this long discussion um, and also more importantly, look at guidelines in terms of prices and whether certain items are worth sending. Is it cheaper potentially to purchase that around or abroad? You know, um, you know, if you've got that, for example, Ikea bookcase, um, you know what it's like, you take it apart, you never get it back the same. Is it really worth sending? So these are the type of things that we really want to talk to clients. And what I would strongly recommend, so I would say six to three months is that nice period, good period to give us a call. Because the most important aspect of international removals is trying to arrange that free home survey, right? So we pop round to the house six months before you go, we start thinking about the access to the property before we even arrive. Because, um, you know, can we get that 40 foot container parked outside in central London? Um, do we need to ferry it? Do, you know, if it's a small part load, you know, what size vehicle would we require? Do we need to get parking suspension? But then walking around the property and spending a good hour with that client, going through not only the regulations and sitting down, you know, uh, talking to the client through the whole process, but going room to room, walking around and be pretty nosy. We say, would you mind opening the cupboards, getting an indication of the, the clothing that's going to be sent, you know, the, the china, the crockery, the furniture items, um, because, <clears throat> excuse me, because we get um, an online inquiry, for example, and the client will say, I've got a two-seater sofa, a bed. It's so difficult to gauge what size that is because you could have a two-seater sofa, but could be the size of a four-seater. So, um, or you could have really sentimental items that um, your grandmother left you. You know, it may not be of value, but we want to be able to make sure that we come around with the correct material, wrap it really, um, almost antique wrap the items for them. So we walk room for room. The estimator that pops around will indicate every single item that has been pointed out. Um, and we'll always say, work on worst case scenario. If it's a maybe, put it on the list. Because what will happen then, your move man, your dedicated move manager will look at that list, look at the notes, formulate a cost based on, because it's all based on volume, whether it be cubic footage or cubic meters. Um, but because you've done it so well in advance, the great thing is you could always phone back and say, 
Well, according to my list um, that when the estimator popped around, could you do me a favor, draw a line through the bedside tables or the, the old bookcase that I mentioned, um, and then give me a new price. Because at the end of the day, you will only be charged for what we physically pick up on the day. So if by chance we weren't told that that wardrobe's no longer going, we come around to the property because one of the biggest criteria is the rest of the world has always been the same. So the US, the Australasian marketplace, um, it's always been that we had to complete a full itemized inventory, right? Mm -hmm. So customs will know that in box number 45, I will find the cutlery, for example, mm -hmm. right? Um, now with Europe, that is now also the same process. Like I mentioned in the beginning, we can't just throw blankets over furniture anymore. You know, we do what we call an international export pack. So in other words, that sofa looks like a Christmas present by the time we finish with it. But more importantly, it allows us to do that itemized inventory where we can not, uh, measure the items. We do what we call a full pack measured list. Um, I mean, also can stipulate in what's in the boxes. It doesn't stop our clients, by the way, from actually packing some of their own boxes or packing of the bulk of it. The only thing difference is that we would request that the client then does the labeling of the boxes because they know what's in the box to do an inventory. And then we will come around, wrap the furniture items. So as you can appreciate with all of this, really, you want to be speaking to us really early on in the process. And the great thing is with the new technology, um, if you've got a small amount and you're a little bit concerned about the overall volume, we now have access to obviously video surveys. So literally we send an app, client clicks on it, I would appear on screen like we're doing today, and they invert their camera, they walk around the property, show us what's going. But if you've got a three bedroom plus property, then let us pop around to the house. You spend such a big time uh, over years accumulating your effect. But I'm quite pleasantly surprised how clients leave that to the last part of the whole process. So really, again, I know it's carrying on about it, but it's so important to start speaking to a removal company really, really early on in the process. Now, all this must, the, can you give us an idea how much... Mm -hmm. It might, uh, you may, I mean, you mentioned, uh, I think you mentioned Portugal. I mean, how much yeah. might it cost for a typical uh, three bed family home yeah. to sort of to transport it to, for instance, southern Portugal? Um, can you give me any kind of examples? Yeah, I would certainly budget on anything between uh, five and a half uh, to six thousand pounds, right? That would be. But that's you doing nothing. Maybe switch the kettle on for the blokes when they pop around. But other than that, we do everything for you. So not only, is, as like I mentioned, we'll wrap the furniture, we do the customs inventory. Um, we would then, depending on the service, because there's two services, certainly for Europe, if we're talking Portugal, for example, you've got your dedicated load. So with a dedicated load, literally the truck will rock up outside the property on the last day, because on a three bedroom property, generally speaking, you're looking at two days of packing. So day one, we wrap everything up, leave the bed, the kettle, the essentials for that evening. The next morning, we'll finish that off. The truck will show up, it's loaded, and then actually sent straight down, over, uh, get ready to cross over uh, to Europe. Now, obviously, that's a lot more expensive um, as opposed to a part load service. I mean, you could uh, add another thousand pounds on top of that service. So for that particular service, you could be looking at for a three bedroom property, dedicated service delivery within 10 days. Um, you could be looking at around about £7,000. And the reason why it's a lot more expensive because we may not have had the opportunity to look at what we call a backload, for something to come back with. Yeah. Um, whereas the part load service, I mean, that could take anything from, a, a, again, a week to three weeks, uh, 28 days, for example. Um, reason being is it has gone up slightly in time frame since post-Brexit because obviously the new requirements, but it, it gives us the opportunity to take time in filling that big articulated vehicle, big truck comes out um, and we will then load that vehicle with your goods, another family load, um, and then take it over. So, um, but I would say for a part load service, I would say plan on around about five, five and a half to 6,000. But again, it all depends on volume. You know, uh, the more you send, the less actually it works out rate per cubic foot. So I would suggest you get a couple of quotes you know, a couple of volume guidelines to yeah. give you a feel. But uh, if you budgeted on around about five and a half, six, you, you, you're in a safe place in terms of uh, uh, what you're looking at in terms of cost. 
And of course, you refer to all this new paperwork needed mm. at the border. Yes, definitely. It, it, that's one of the advantages of, of dealing with a company like you rather than trying to, God knows, do it yourself and throw, throw a few things in the back of a lorry. I mean, that, that's, that's, you, 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 could quit, you could quite easily come unstuck doing that now, couldn't you? Like not, not, not maybe before Brexit so much. Yeah, well, I mean, the biggest thing is, is what we're trying to avoid is two things we're trying to look at. One, the most important thing is not trying to avoid the, the application of duties and taxes payable on your effects being sent, right? So um, the very first thing we would request is the second hand value of your effects, because if by chance any duties and taxes are imposed on those goods it will be based on the second hand value. Uh, we would help clients with that. Um, it's really difficult to think, well, uh, you know what it's like in the UK. You can buy a sofa today and tomorrow you leave it out front and it stays out front and nobody's bothered picking it up. So it's basically looking at the second hand value and that's really based on what the duties and taxes will be. In terms of paperwork, um, the most important thing is with now looking at Europe, it is like shipping from the US to Europe. There is no difference in terms of the requirements now. The most important uh, requirement is that you need to prove that you've been living outside of the, uh, Europe for at least 12 months. So if you were again bringing up Portugal, for example, you're moving to the south of Portugal, you need to prove that you've been living outside of Portugal for 12 months. Now, the way you can do that is either a rental agreement, uh, your, a, some form of utility bill, um, um, even uh, your mortgage uh, agreement, anything that we can prove that you've been physically living in the UK for 12 months, right? So that's point one. Point two is that, yes, we need the second-hand value. We also need that inventory. Now, depending on where you're going, now, some uh, European destinations uh, would like, for example, if you're looking at Greece, you would need to go to the Greek embassy in the UK with a copy of the inventory and get that notarized and stamped so that they know that those items are coming over. But the biggest criteria is that you need to be a tax resident in that country, right? So in other words, with Spain, you may need an NIE number. Um, for Greece, you need a, for example, a um, enough number. So it all depends on where you're going. Although the criteria is the same, yes, you need to be in out of the country for 12 months. And yes, you need to prove that you're a tax resident. There may be slight little tweaks between each European destination. For example, so a lot of them, you may need to register yourself at the town hall. Yes, it's been tricky with COVID because I mean, people going into quarantine, not being able to you know, get the certain criteria and meet those requirements on the other end. But again, that's why I'm saying working with us early on in the process, we will guide you through what's needed because it's in our best interest that our clients um, are not gonna be imposing, you know, not gonna be charged that unknown quantity of taxes and duties because there's a fine line between the shipping costs potential duties and taxes and whether it's worth actually then sending your effects. So um, it's in our benefit that we guide those clients through each and every step of that terms of that documentation. Um, but the good thing is that, so I get some clients thinking, well, if I don't meet this criteria, will my stuff be left in the UK? Will I still, yes, absolutely. You, we will never, you will always get your effects um, and we will never be, be held up. The difference is whether or not you're gonna be paying the duties or taxes or being able to get your effects in duty free. Okay, and I've interviewed a few people recently who've who've sold their houses in the UK remarkably fast. You yeah. referred to the buoyant market, and they've had to rent because um, they've got nowhere to live until they can fly or move to Europe. Can you store people's possessions? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, we've got uh, like I said, we've got quite a lot of large depots. So if you say in Wigan or uh, anything north of Birmingham, we would store it in Manchester. Anything south of Birmingham, like I said, we've got the depot in Essex, we've got a depot in Croydon, the depot in uh, Dartford, uh, really large facilities. And it actually comes and gets placed into these extremely, what we call lift fans. They are 250 cubic foot large wooden crates. Um, it's all numbered, itemized, your, only your effects go in there. Um, but because of the pandemic, what we found is that you're absolutely correct in saying that houses are being sold, people can't move because of quarantine issues. But uh, so what we've done is we've agreed that we will give all our clients four weeks free storage in the UK, right? I mean, the cost thereof 
thereafter. It works out to about six pence per cubic foot per week thereafter. Um, so we would hold it for four weeks free of charge anyway, and we will work with our clients and then keep it there almost indefinitely until they are happy for us to then um, hit the switch to say it's ready to go. Um, just keep in mind though that that's when the clock ticks again. If it's a part load, it's almost 28 days after that notification that it's going to be delivered. Um, one thing I need to bring up, the, the only good news that has come out of all of this, where's before on all the quotes going to Europe, because we were part of the European market, the, there was always VAT applicable on top of your quote. The good news now, and the only good news is that there is no longer any VAT. So the price you get is the price you pay. There's no longer adding on 20% VAT. So where you save on the, the VAT, you may have to pay a little bit of duty on the other. You know, So um, yeah. there is some good news out of all of this, but certainly storage, again, not a problem at all. And John, if, for, it, for instance, uh, the people don't arrive in time for their load which is going separately because maybe their flight's been cancelled or they mm -hmm. get delayed for, I don't know, illness, et cetera. What, is there someone at the destination that can help look after it or, or unpack? How does that work? Well, the thing is, I mean, again, you can nominate somebody. And this happens quite often. You know, um, the house is sold, but the um, last minute, like you say, flights have been cancelled. The effect's already on, on its way going across. You know, whether it be an employer, the, the, a friend, a family member, um, because we are part, like I said, of the European group, the Euro Movers group, right? We've got partners in every place in um, Europe. So worst case scenario, we would always pick up the phone and say to one of our European partners, look, we've got this consignment coming over. Would you mind storing it there? Because they may not have a property or they may not um, have somebody to... Uh, look after the consignments while it's there but certainly again as long as we get all the documentation um work with us we could like i said either hold it on the set we can hold it on the other end, or have a representative allow us into the property because when we do deliver i mean we will unpack absolutely all the furniture remove the waste material if we dismantled the beds the dining room table you know the big items that needed to be dismantled to get it out of the front door um, in the UK, the courtesy is that we will reassemble all those items um, on their behalf. The only thing we don't do is we don't put your cups and saucers back into coverage, your clothing and put your bedding on, you know, I mean, certainly if you wanted that service, uh, um, we can do that. We've got uh, partners who have what we call, for example, in the UK, we do have a service where we can strip the bedding and go to that extent. But the normal service is that we'll put all your furniture into designated rooms, uh, reassemble items that we dismantled. Um, the only tricky part for deliveries in Europe, and sometimes a very unknown factor, is that um, the property, the client's purchase in the process of purchasing that property, and sometimes access can be a little bit tricky. Um, so there could be, I had one recently going to Spain where there were certain weight restrictions on either side of the road. Um, but certainly, again, we will work around that. Only difference is we'll get a smaller vehicle to meet the larger vehicle and ferry it back and forth. But um, yeah, we've um, Europe can be sometimes tricky in terms of access. You could be on the 10th floor, no lift. There could be numerous case scenarios. As long as we know, and I can say upfront, uh, we will work with the client to get through that. So journey times, you mentioned, hmm. I mean, you mentioned Spain just now. I mean, yeah. How long to allow typically for a, um, if, you, if you're if you sort of sharing a van um, doing yeah. that route, how how long might the transit take for a, 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 your house full of furniture? Yeah, I would certainly plan, worst case scenario, around about 28 days, right? Uh, well, it used to be, say, within uh, 21 days, three weeks. But now, like I said, post-Brexit, because now also... Obviously, people are being tested before they leave the UK. We have to raise certain clearance documentation. Um, so uh, waiting for, um, you know, crossing over the ferry crossings have taken a little bit longer. So to be on the safe side, I would say worst case plan on around about 28 days. So if you are wanting your effects sooner, but you still want the shared load, I would then say rough it out, you know, uh, get loads of takeaways, you know, camp in the house and what we could do 
is then collect that potentially a week before you go. But I, I like that process because it gives clients a chance to tidy up loose ends. You know, never have a collection the day before you go. You put yourself under immense stress. They say moving abroad is as stressful as getting married. You know, um, there's so much going on in your mind. That, and so really it's um, important for us to make sure that at least the removal side can go as smoothly as possible. You know, so, um, but certainly, yeah, 28 days. And that I would say would cover the whole of Europe. Yeah, that we would be pretty, be pretty confident that um, in that time frame we will get secure enough if, uh, or more than enough effects to be able to meet that criteria. With, with the very unpredictable nature of co the pandemic and travel arrangements and et cetera, uh, lockdowns, uh, is extra insurance involved for I is that factored into the price for, for the oh. customer or do they have to take out I mean if if, if something happened because of the the pandemic is that covered well yeah I mean with regards to insurance every company has what they call a limited liability so certainly a small amount of liability to cover so god forbid a item went missing you know, the company has a small amount of liability. I think it works out to around about £45 per package or um, item. Um, but we always recommend take some form of cover, right? Um, now, to be honest with you, things like books, clothing, toys, you think, mm, is it really worth take covering those items? So you can be really pick and choosy on the items you want to insure. So you may say, well, actually, that brand new 4K TV, I'm definitely going to insure that. That's my pride and joy. I'm going to insure that item. Um, these couple of antique items I want to ensure, but whatever the figure comes up to, you're looking at 2% of that particular figure, right? So if you said a thousand pounds, only you're looking at what, 20 pounds for every thousand pounds, um, and it covers you for theft, loss, fire, breakage. And the good thing about the policy is that it's valid for 30 days post delivery. Now, that's not putting in the claim that if by chance there is a small bit of damage, um, you've got 30 days to submit or uh, your intention to claim within that 30 day period. So once they've unpacked everything and you said to blokes, guys, leave those boxes one side, we're going to take our time in unpacking them. At least, you know, you've got that for those 30 days to just double check and cost check. Um, oh, it's like travel insurance, you know, um, you always end up taking it. How many times do you claim on it? I know our insurance claim is just under 1%. And when you consider you know, the thousands of moves we do annually. Um, that's why it's so important to make sure that the men that come around and do the packing really know what the process is and, um, and just really the way we store effects, the way we pack effects. Um, it does, unfortunately, if you decide to pack it all yourself, um, that rate does go up and it does shoot up quite considerably to 5%. So yes, you may want to save on one end by doing the packing yourself, but then you've got to think the off, cuff in terms of the insurance charges that may go up so um yeah it's um but certainly again speak to us we'll run through that whole process um and just again put the client's mind at ease really and briefly john what about is there anything that you can't take i mean what about the sort of people wanting to move um a boat a car their pets yeah. uh, are yeah. they they're very niche areas do you recommend other people or how does that work yeah i mean certainly um vehicles we can do right um again there's certain different requirements needed for that like for example we need a copy of the v5 you need to deregister it with the dvla and certainly we can work with vehicles um even boats airplanes you name it we can do that the only thing obviously we can't do is pets um we get strange enough we get asked that oh can you put my kids in a box but you never hear can i put my pet in a box so um, we work with some really close partners i mean pets for example is it's a member of the family um you know there's there's new criteria for example you know they need to get their rabies injections mm. they can't travel for a certain time um but certainly um we work with a number of companies that we been working with for numerous years i mean you can't just recommend anybody when it comes to pets but um certainly in any aspect of the migration we have some really good core partners that were you know well trusted and over the years of working with them certainly be able to assist in terms of things that can't go um certainly now because of brexit um uh, the criteria have changed unfortunately 
you can't send your plants anymore. You need to, if you wanted to, you need special permission to get them in. You need cert certification of the type of plant. Um, to be honest with you, and the cost to send plants is extortionate because you're not only paying for the plant itself, you're paying for the height above it because you can't be packing stuff on top of the plant. Sure. Not only that, if it's taking 28 days, it's all wrapped up. You know, what's the state of the plant going to look like by the time it arrives out there? Um, any alcohol, just have a massive party and drink it all. Um, the, the Again, you know, uh, majority of European countries just do not want alcohol in the consignment at all. Um, and the last thing you want is them to come across that and the duties and taxes on it. It doesn't justify sending that over. I always say to clients, either have a party, if you've got a couple of sentimental bottles that have been given to you, you know, um, I would then recommend take that on the plane with you. Um, you know, I would just try and avoid anything organic, you know, because now you've got to think about foreign seeds, soil, um, you know, you've got to be treating Europe now as if you were shipping to the US or to Australia. We, you know, it's a bit of a mind shift you know, being so close partners with the EU for so, so many years. Um, but like I said, it's, um, it's really, really important. If I, the last, if anything I could bring across today would be speak to your removal company really, really early on in the process. So basically, yeah, they, they have the chats with you. you. You, I imagine you give them a sort of a vague schedule of what they need to do when, uh, yes. when they sign up with you. And, um, and I imagine there might be some good resources um, on your website, guides to, uh, you, you send people a lot of info. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, we don't, you know, nobody for six months if we're working with a client doesn't just want to hear about removals every single time. We've got some really useful blog pages on our website. I think we get something like in excess of 10,000 visitors a month on there. Um, some really good key partners, whether it be, uh, pension, um, you know, your pets, um, you know, even uh, property, we work very closely with Place in the Sun and we've got some lovely partners that we've uh, formed over the years uh, with Place in the Sun, you know, and uh, yeah, we get asked uh, numerous questions, whether it be schooling, um, you know, um, orientation, but yeah, certainly visit our blog pages, we've got some really, really good, useful information there from um, all aspects in terms of uh, migrating abroad, absolutely. And people can just pick up the phone and ring you, or, or have a, um, a Zoom call. Is that uh, things like that? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, either way. I mean, like I said, that's great with the modern technology. I mean, certainly being in lockdown has uh, really uh, been challenging when it first started. I am pleasantly surprised how. Everybody's been pulling together, working from home, and with the modern technology we have, has made really life really good in terms of interacting with our clients now. Um, you know, it's not just telephone based anymore. Um, we really like to get to know our clients. Um, you know, we always we've always said we're a family run business, and you know, we want to really maintain that and try and build that relationship with the client because, like I said, it is pretty stressful process. So. Uh, yeah, whether it be a Zoom call, whether it be just a normal Skype, WhatsApp, um, whether we use our app that we've got um, in terms of the, for the video survey. But I mean, ideally, I would, if I could get my way, I would rather come around, spend quality time with the client, visit the client and spend that good quality hour with them so that when we walk away from it, they feel comfortable with the process. Yeah. Okay, great, John. Well, there's going to be some resources uh, accompanying this video on our page on aplaceinthesun.com. So um, get in touch if you need any more information with John and PSS International Removals. Thank you for listening. Uh, is anything to just quickly before you go, John? Um, yeah, just say, I know it can be frustrating with the whole Brexit. You know, um, trust me, uh, for us in our industry, we were really worried. Um, but as time has gone on, you know, it's now been, what, almost five months. Um, you know, we're certainly a lot more in a better position to look after our clients. We feel really confident in what we're doing now. Um, please, um, again, I know I'm harping on about it, but speak to us early on in the process. We would love to guide you through that process. And, uh, yeah, we're always available um, and look forward to meeting them. Thank you, John. Thank you for listening. We hope that was useful. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.